down at Stratford here, was the great Stratford centre behind me, the looming towers of Westfield ahead. And I'm out walking again with one of my favourite people in the entire world, the filmmaker that inspired me to go and pick up a camera, the great Andrew Cotting. Yes, Andrew Cotting is here and we're going to take a walk today. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Andrew's just coming up with his daughter, Eden. We've got a very special guest. Andrew's daughter, Eden, is joining us today. And they're just going to make their ways up the stairs there. 7, 12, 29, 30, 38, 36, 90. Say hello to John. Got a long hello. way to go. Hi, Eden. You say hi. Hi. We're going up the top, OK? You good for that? Come on in. So the plan is to walk from here with John all the way to the gallery, you know, where you've got your show with Daddy, your Fred's gallery. Right. And again. I've talked about this before, um, how Andrew's film Galavan, that I saw the Sydney Film Festival in uh, 1997, was the reason I went out. I bought a Super 8 camera and I started to want to make films. And Eden is really the star of that film. It's a really magical film, Galavan. So it's really incredible to be walking with Andrew and Eden today. Uh, I'll link below to the walk I did with Andrew in St. Leonard's in December. And Eden also appears in that. And we talk a lot about Galavan and all that stuff. Tell me about these, these the fish. Oh, I are think... they kayaks that are left over from the Olympics? <laughs> yeah, they should be. Is that yeah. what they are? I think they were to hide Stratford Centre for the Olympics. OK, right. There's a piece of commission work going. Nobody really knows that the centre's there because of these. Yeah. It's a distraction. It's the Stratford they deny. OK. It doesn't fit the plan. And have you been to the Sky High Cinema yet? Never. Never been up there. Never been to that roof garden. There's a bar up there as is, well. Is it like an open-air screening? Uh, that... I guess it must be, yeah. yeah. Right, right. So saying at the beginning, we were getting a little bit confused as to Westfield side and the Stratford side, but it's just grown exponentially from I, I used to be a runner for shipping agents. And they sent me to Stratford, and it was kind of where the, the depots were and the containers, and you'd come out of the old school Stratford station, which really was like a, a urinal. And then the, you'd kind of walk along maybe half a mile that way, and then there's a foot tunnel that brought you out into this big kind of container park. Well, I must have been about 14 then, 13, 14. Yeah. And so occasionally we came back here, obviously with Ian, to do a bit of a walk, and we pedaled for uh, the film, but it's just completely transformed. It's, yeah. It's frightening. It's another world, isn't it? It's a city. It is, yeah, yeah. We'll talk yeah. about what we're going to do on the other side of Westfield, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess this is your part of your manor now. You've done this many it's times. It's my manor. Yeah, yeah. make our way through the Olympic Park here to the other side, to the Hackney side. So Andrew, do you want to say a little bit here about Swandown? About Swandown, Swandown well, Pedlings. yeah, I mean we've got some copycat um, peddlings going on, peddlees. Okay, is this the River Lee or is this one of the canals? It's, I think this is the waterworks. This is the waterworks, okay. The but yeah, Ian, really, yeah. Sinclair and myself, and Eden, you joined us intermittently, didn't you? We made a a pedal from um, Hastings, Swan Lake, all the way to here, the Olympic site. I mean, we kind of came around. I mean, I'm still a bit discombobulated. Today's walk hopefully will sort us out a bit better. Yeah. But we pedaled in and around here, and in fact, it was still being developed. So this would have been 10 years ago. And helicopters were flying overhead, telling us that we had to stay away from the Olympic site. And we thought it was, they were talking to, uh, some other, other infiltrators, but it was just, now you on the pedalo, stay away from the Olympic site, uh, which was high drama. It's quite strange to now see these, uh, these kind of pedalos just taken in the, uh, the cityscape. Ahoy there! Ahoy there! <laughs> What's it like? Do you feel uh, river sick? Not just yet. yet. Uh-huh. How deep is it? Right, you, you both look very, very contented. Have you named it? I'm 
aware, I haven't told you what we're planning to do today. Andrew's actually got a show on in a gallery in Hackney with, he created, with Eden, with his daughter Eden. And it's like, it's, there's, there are collages and stuff there, but there's also, it's also a VR experience, which I think is of the Pyrenees, a place where Andrew spent a lot of time in the past and made films there. And so we're going to walk to the gallery, that's the idea. And I think we're then going to, the idea is we go from this walk here, from Hackney, to the Pyrenees. And then, after that, I'm going to walk on somewhere beyond. I don't know where, but maybe we'll go Columbia Road, something like that, go along Columbia Road towards the Barbican. I don't know, who knows, actually. I haven't really thought that bit of the walk out, but that's part two, if you like, of a two-part, or maybe a three-part video. Yeah, you could work out where we are, because we've been, it feels like we've been walking for like four hours. This is your manor. Yeah, so there we go. We're probably around here somewhere. So we are, we're about to go along the Hartford Union. Is it even on here? I don't know, because this is Hartford the... Hartford Union. That's yes. West Ham. Aren't we... It's strange. That, the, if that's the... That's the River Lee. Here you go. This is where we're going to go. All right, we're gonna so go there. we're about to come in there, yeah. We're about to go there. So... Andrew then told me a little bit about the route they took for Swan Down at this stage of that epic journey. It's the way you'd go to... Yeah, we ended up down there and we, we went as far as we could into the... Um, into the Angel Tunnel at Islington. And that's kind of where the, um, the film ends. So yeah, th that I remember that very clearly, this scene, you'll, you'll find it. This is the scene down on the canal now. There's a barge over there where you can get food and drink, Barge East. There's this place here, I don't know what they call it, but it's, it says cold beer here, which is always a good thing. And there's sort of tables and what have you, people having a nice time. And we're gonna go over the bridge there. Just around the corner here, we're going to turn onto the Hartford Union Canal, which is quite a short stretch of canal. I think it's like about a mile and a half long, maybe. And it leads into the Regent's Canal. Interestingly, the last time I walked along here, which I think was March 2021, they drained it, so there was no water in here. So I haven't filmed this with water in it, so that's going to be interesting. They come in and they go out. We don't know where they go, but they always go somewhere. And there's always another one that comes back in after us. If you look down there, right, well, in a minute we'll get to Victoria Park. Have a go on the VR, and I think Mummy will be there by then. Yeah, and Miles might come along as well. And what, and what flavour are you going to have? Chocolate. Okay, we can do that. I'm sure there'll be a chocolate shop. Of course, the Hartford Union Canal is reflective of the the history. Is that you oh, talking to yourself, you Andrew? The, uh, Andrew's wondering if I know what I'm talking about. There's talk, a no, fair chance yourself. that I don't, but I think it's to do with the fact that <laughs> the Lee navigation was was uh, created to bring goods down from Hartford, mainly sort of grain. And then this, the Hartford Union Canal, would connect the Lee navigation to the Regent's Canal. And then from the Regent's Canal, it would connect to the Grand Union Canal. And so the goods from Hartford could either go to the docks and out across the world, or they could go through the canal system throughout the country, making Hartford a really prosperous place. Does that sound convincing, Andrew? That wasn't bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought you were going to talk about the thigh bone being connected to the hip bone <laughs> at one point. But the it canal's is. a lot more interesting. It is a bit like that. It is, yeah. It's all interconnected, yeah. for sure. Now we're going to walk across a bit of Victoria Park and perhaps pick up the Regent's Canal, which takes us to the gallery. You haven't got any swan pedalos, have you? Swan pedalos? Swan, no, just do boats? Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. All right, thank you. Oh, well, there's a goose then. You can't ride that though, can you? Victoria Park was known very quickly as the People's Park. 
I think uh, nine million people a year come to Victoria Park, Andrew. Nine million nine a year. Million people. Nine million people. They've got any swan pedalos though. Have they've you? got no swan no pedalos. Yeah, they've got. A, there's a very limp um, goose, but you, apparently you can't ride them. All you can do is look at them. Is that right, Eden? Did you want to go on a pedalo? Mm -hmm. No. What are you thinking about now? Yeah. Sign. Cake. Chocolate cake. Come on, we'll get you to the gallery. Cake. We'll to, to the, the gallery. gallery. Yeah, we'll find some cake there. This is uh, Victoria Park Market. See a bit of a food market. The smells indicate that. Food market, posh coffee, craft beer. Burgers, the, burgers. All, burgers. All Definitely the, burgers. All the cliches. This is mm. something Ian Sinclair would really detest, right? Yeah, he, well, he'd stand here salivating, but pretending he wasn't. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you'd have to mop up after him because he, he would devour a venison burger, that's for sure. <laughs> that's definitely his tipple. It might be a chocolate brownie. Well, there's over here, look. Should we take this to go to the studio? To the gallery? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Are you allowed to like to have half as a taster? Yeah. No. <laughs> Do you make them yourself? Did you make them yourself? No, but the baker's in uh, Kingston. Oh, the baker's in Kingston. Yeah. Oh, well, they're heavy, yeah. which is good. Eden, look. There's a chocolate brownie. We'll have that later. But well, thank you. See ya. Yeah, that's for later. So now we're on the Regent's Canal. And the gallery where Andrew's show is is just off the Regent's Canal in Sheep Lane, Hackney. That's our, that's our next stop. <laughs> this is where we come off the towpath and go up to the gallery. Thankfully there's a ramp. It's a total coincidence that this links back to the walk I did, I think I say in March 2021, where I went to Ron Hutchins's house gallery place. And I literally walked the same way, came down Sheep Lane, went onto the canal, down the canal, and then along the Hartford Union, across Vicky Park. I've pretty much replicated that journey. But now we are here for a purpose for Andrew's, uh, Andrew's show, which is just up here somewhere. Yeah, Andrew and Eden, who are very, Andrew very and Eden. excited to show you. So this is Sheep Lane, and we're about to head down to the New Arts Project Gallery, which is where the two of us have our first London commercial show. Oh, wow. So and the gallery's not normally open on a Sunday, but we're going to show or we'll give John a private uh, view, and also afterwards a lap dance. We're going to be giving you a lap dance, John, using the VR headset, the Oculus, which again, we haven't actually tried in the gallery space properly yet, so you'll be our first punter. So you'll be sat in amongst the, the collages, the paintings, and also the installation projection of disease and disorderly, and uh, experiencing this new project called the Telltale Rooms, which is very much a, a work in progress. But it's something that yeah, I'm excited to show you, because oh, I think amazing. I might have talked about it when you came to St. Leonard's at the tail end of last year. I think so. Yeah. Wow. And what's the significance of the Pyrenees to you, Andrew, and well, Eden? Eden was born um, in 88 and we bought the house in 89. So we moved down there after I graduated from the Slade, having done an MA when she was just over a year old. And really for the last 34 years, we've been going backwards and forwards there. It's become like a, a memory hovel. And so it's full of uh, paraphernalia that pertains to, the, to our lives down there, really. This is the tip of the iceberg, John. We've got uh, about, there were about another 20 of the smaller collages that we decided not to frame. And there's about another 10 of the, the larger ones. So it's, um, it's an immersive experience for sure. Excuse me, can you help me? I'm terribly worried. Is that the name of the show? <laughs> that was the name of the show, yeah. So as well as this space, we also hear I think you, I sent you the link to this. This is the diseased and disorderly film that um, was commissioned by the Beer Fire. And in many ways, a lot of these artworks spilt out of that in the last well, two years of lockdown. And we moved studio into a new studio. And so this became the kind of 
the routine every Sunday we'd go swimming, you'd have your lunch, and then we set about, maybe each one of these represents one day's work, each um, collage. And then, yeah, this is the, the screening room. So that's us in the old studio, isn't it? She stands and reaches for the walker with the words, and this is not the end of my story, but just the beginning. She is silhouetted in front of the window as she approaches the camera. The screen goes black. I love these audio descriptions. We decided to run it with the audio description. So is that um, Monsegur? That's Monsegur, CGI of Monsegur. And we're now going to plummet down into the ocean, but the mountain range around it, in, in there is where the, the, the farmhouse is, the Pyrenean farmhouse that you're going to experience in a minute in the VR. And then these heads, they populate the, the animated film and they're modeled in CGI, a bit like the Monsegur that you've just had by, from um, an ex-student of mine, an MA student called Isabel Skinner. And so we were gonna maybe cast them in bronze, but we ended up 3D printing them. And they kind of, the nice thing about them is that they're designed to move a bit. And so we hand painted each one. So each one is a kind of bespoke limited edition uh, telltale head. So these are the telltale heads. And then as you can see, the paintings, the heads feature a lot. And in fact, they're all self-portraits of Eden. This is Eden with a garland on that she wears every year when we work on the Jack and the Green. We've got the Jack and the Green in um, Hastings. And then now for the last six years, we've been involved with the, uh, the depth of Jack, which is very similar. Right, John, what you're about to experience, you're about to visit the French Pyrenees, um, where a lot of the telltale heads will be drifting around and encouraging you to investigate uh, a Pyrenean farmhouse that we mentioned earlier that we've had for 34 years. And so you're going to go into it, it's like a memory hovel. And once you're inside this memory hovel, stuff begins to happen. So you're going to be led through different rooms for 12 minutes and experience uh, snippets sound bites from various projects that have either had their genesis in the Pyrenees or have concluded in the Pyrenees. Mm. But your mistress of ceremony, ceremonies will be Eden. So she kind of features in most rooms. And also you'll find that there's a, a Zimmer frame, which is there as a taster as to how you might navigate through the rooms should we ever get the, the money to complete it. When your red light's flashing, it means that you're, you're I'm filming, yeah? What's that? I've got your camera running, yeah. and there's a red light top left flashing. That means that's it. You're here from it. Okay, yeah. right. That's it. And the scene. So this is actually how you're placing the pyramid. Yeah, it's, we've this used photogrammetry. So in effect, you're looking at it. This is the most kind of pristine version that you're ever going to get at the moment, yeah. as opposed to just VR VR. Yeah. So it's composited and built up in these kind of cubes. Wow, and I can see out the windows. It's got real depth. I can see out the window to the other, another room on the Yeah, outside. so we're playing around with perspective. And in a minute, you're yeah. going to go into the room of nostalgia. Oh, yeah. What's that mix? Okay, I'm in a different room now. That is, wow. Wow. That's something else. That's amazing. That was okay? Yeah, no, it was more than that. It was incredible. It's, <laughs> it's almost like you're a bit disappointed to come back. <laughs> it's almost like, you're like, oh no, take me back to the Pyrenees. What an amazing experience. <laughs> hey, the walk with Andrew and Eden, which was fantastic, and always a, it was a real massive treat. I feel incredibly privileged. But then that um, VR experience is mind boggling. You can imagine this kind of thing. I could film this kind of thing on a 360 camera, and you could experience that through one of those headsets, and you could come out for a walk with me wherever you are. That's um, astonishing. And so if you can make it along to the gallery, I'll put the name and the address of the gallery down here on the screen. And also I'll put the details in the description below. And those artworks are for sale. So you could own an Andrew and Eden Cotting original. And they're not, you know, not madly expensive. They're not Damien Hirst prices, that's for sure. So what I think we'll do now is we'll go along Broadway Market 
And then as a decision point, either we then carry on up the Regent's Canal to Islington, which is kind of what I feel like doing, if I was honest with you. I did it a couple of weeks ago and it was heavenly. Should we do that? Should we just not even consider the other options? Okay, it's just, <laughs> mine's made up, that's what we're doing. That's the, that's the Dove. I used to drink in there in the, uh, in the early 90s. I used to drink in here and they used to put like hot food out on the bar when there was a football match on. So we used to come here and basically eat the, <laughs> just to eat the food and have a half a lug because we had no money. There's that thing where the old, the old shop fronts have been sort of preserved, I guess, and done up, which is kind of nice to see. Even if the old businesses that occupied them have gone. I'm not sure where the pine mash was actually. On the one hand, I really like the fact there's a cost cutter kind of keeping it real. But look, it's been it's a bougie cost cutter. They've done it up. <laughs> but here behind me, actually, there is a londis, a proper londis. Because back, you know, I mean, Broadway Market's seen as a kind of a real symbol of the gentrification of Hackney, basically. People have written articles about it. The changes taking place in Broadway Market really being the most obvious symptom of gentrification when all the little old local businesses were, you know, forced out of this area and they've been replaced by the more kind of, what would you call them, bourgeois type of businesses. Like the old pie and mash shop has gone, I believe, it recently shut, the old Broadway Market pie and mash. Lovely to meet Ian back there who who watches the video, subscribes on YouTube, grew up in the East End, lives in Bahrain. Lovely to meet you, Ian. It's always lovely to meet people when I'm out going for a walk and they watch the videos. I met a couple of people yesterday, someone down in Ramsgate who was on a, a hen, hen do, a hen weekend. A lady came over, that was lovely. And somebody on the bus, on the 339 bus. It's a world of wonders. Hi. Dumplings, hi. Oh my God. Hi, how are you? Hey, Sergeant. So what, yes, do you, what, what are you selling, dumplings? Uh, we're selling dumplings, it's, uh, like, it's a vegetarian, chicken, and uh, pork one as well. Right. What would you like? I'll send it, not, not for me, because I've eaten. Okay. I just had an enormous chocolate brownie. Oh, good chocolate brownie. So I will give you a one for the, just for the taste. Yeah? Oh, for just the for the taste, so I can tell people yeah. how great your, your dumplings okay. are. So huh? how's your doing, good? Yeah, how's good, thank day? you. It's excellent. Perfect. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. Uh, and that one, and I'll... Like veggie, yeah? Okay, perfect, I, anything. Oh, okay, this one is... And, okay. I'll, and I'll review it for you. All right, thank you. You want to see that on it? Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. I'll give you an instant review. <laughs> thank you so much. What's your store called? It's called... Mikito Dumplings and Rolls. There we go, Thank sir. you very much. You right. On the fork. As well. on the fork. This is, this is launching a new angle to my career as a food reviewer. Yeah. These are dumplings. Yeah, I'm from Taiwan. These are Taiwan specialties from Beijing. These are the best dumplings I've ever had. Ever. <laughs> Thank you so much. So whenever people see me in the street now, they're going to give, <laughs> give me dumplings. <laughs> give me. Thank you very much. What's your name? <laughs> my name is Suleiman. Suleiman. Uh, yeah. Come and get Suleiman's dumplings down here on Broadway Market. I'm going to love that dumpling store. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Have a great day. John. John. Nice to meet you, sir, John. Thank you so much. Thank nice you. It's the Cat and Mutton Pub. I don't remember that, but um, it certainly would have been different in 1992, I would have thought. Here it is, F. Cook's Pie and Mess Shop. Sadly now closed. It's a real tragedy, isn't it? If you want uh, Jake Green, who I've mentioned before, to do his wonderful projects about pie and mash shops, and this was included in it, I believe, when it was still open, so it's only recently shut, I think. There's another pub here on the corner. I'm not sure what that one was. I only remember the, uh, the Dove, to be honest with you. I don't remember the other ones, but they're full of people, so quite popular. I think we'll get back onto the towpath now, right? There we go. It's called the uh, Sir Walter Scott. Rebuilt in 1909. Lovely to meet Ellie and Sylvan back there in Broadway Market who watch the videos. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. They've been out for a ride in Epping Forest. Lovely to meet people. It's, it means a lot to me when people come and say, Ah, oh, I love your videos. I've been doing one of your walks today on your recommendation. Like they've been up in Epping Forest because they watch the Epping Forest videos. Fills my heart, that does. Fills my heart. 
I love the story about the Regent's Canal is that it took them so long to get the permission to build along the route of the canal and that's why it's called the Regent's Canal because they had to go through Regent's Park and the Prince Regent gave permission if they named it after him or they decided to name it after him to kind of butter him up. <laughs> because it took so long to get permission and then to build it, by the, by the time it was finished, the railways had come. Okay, I realised I got my timeline a little bit askew with here and the railways hadn't arrived by the time the Regent's Canal was completed in 1820, but they followed not long after. And the Euston Road had been built in that time, which kind of competed with the canal. Making it kind of, not quite obsolete, but not as good a proposition as it had when they planned it before the railways had come. So they kind of got a little bit scuppered by the slow process of negotiating the land sales and the onward march of technology. I'm not sure what's going on up here. There's this yellow blimp on a barge and a couple of inflatable or fiberglass sharks. Who knows, it is Hackney. It actually says save the Hackney Sharks over there. So I guess the Hackney Sharks might be like a canoeing club or something, or under threat. What I think we'll do is we'll just cross the canal to Gainsborough Studios over there, which was where um, Alfred Hitchcock made some of his early films, and I think there's a statue of him over there somewhere in that new development. This is the site of the former film studios. A number of uh, early classic British films were made. So this is indeed the, uh, the statue of Alfred Hitchcock. So I thought it was a more conventional statue of him just stood there holding a reel of film. I don't know where I got that idea from. This is where Hitchcock made uh, some of his first films. He made The Lodger here, which is a great film, The Pleasure Garden. Uh, I'll put the names of the other ones, but those two, I've seen those two and they're great films. And they were shot here. Back on the canal now. This is the final stretch up to the Islington Tunnel, which is where our walk will end today. It's a good place to end a walk, I think. One of the best places to end a walk, in fact. The brilliant City Road Basin. I love it here. Such a beautiful expanse of water here on the Regent's Canal, just off of, uh, well, just off of City Road, near the Angel. It's a great place to just come and sit and hang out. So here it is, the Islington Tunnel and the end of the walk. What a great place to end the walk. If you want to see a continuation from here, I'll link below to my walk around Canterbury, which covers all the area above this tunnel. Wow, what an amazing day. How brilliant it was to walk with Andrew and Eden to their show in Hackney and to experience that whole big, that, that VR thing was incredible. It's always amazing to walk with, with Andrew and Eden. It's great to see them. Andrew's a great inspiration to me. That's the end of season four, which is fantastic. So if you're watching this the week it's uploaded, there'll be no video next week. That's the end of the season and then the following week it'll be the start of season six. So as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. It might be somewhere a little bit different. Oh no, it'll be a couple of weeks time. It might be something a little bit more exotic. Maybe not, who knows? <laughs>